Thank you, Numu, for hosting us. Thanks for coming. And uh, so my name is Tom Cannon. I'm the poet laureate of Oshkosh, I think. Not real sure, but I, I'm still going to act like a poet laureate, except tonight I'm not. I'm going to start off by reading from, some, from a novel. My novel Shattered. Um, and I still think that that will be okay because poets, poet laureates, whatever position, we need to encourage each other regardless of the medium, poetry, uh, writing, artists. We just want to keep going. And that's, before I get to that, my quick chapter, I just going to start off with what I call the road grader story. Okay? And it has to do with what I'm going to talk about tonight. And the road grader story is a story that my dad tells often. It's about when he was a kid in the 1950s, they were redoing the road by the family farm. And so the guy came out, gave him and said, you want to get a job? So he had him get on this piece of equipment. Not sure it was a road grader, but imagine it's a road grader, right? He's like, well, you have to operate it such and such, and you have to have the blade, you gotta be careful to do it this way. It made my dad so nervous that he couldn't do it. And then, my, so my grandpa said he would do it. He got onto the machine, and the guy says, doesn't matter, just run it. The contract says we have to run this machine, so we're running the machine. And my dad says, well, to me, that's a story of how people could be gaslighting them, not just jerks. But to my dad, that message is, that story is a message. He uses it to explain that you should just try stuff. Instead of being too nervous, just try things and just assume they're doing fine. As long as no one else is yelling at you, you're doing okay. And that's kind of what I've been doing as a writer. Nobody's yelled at me yet. Well, in a while they haven't yelled at me. So I have my book Shattered. I started writing it in the uh, 1990s. And um, it took me a, so it took me a long time. I started out with a notebook. I eventually worked myself up to a word processor from Montgomery Ward, and it just kept plodding along until I got it published. So I'm going to read from Chapter Three of Shattered. Uh, so my main character is a stand-up com comic in the '90s. Uh, he is. He comes home, has a gig at a, at a Holiday Inn, then he reconnects with his best friend, the person he's been waiting for uh, for six months, his friend Elaine. They have a great time, but then he comes home and he can't. He spends a restless night, he can't sleep. And he's slowly having his grief come to him. You know, he thinks that he avoided his grief after a breakup with a fiance, and he thought he avoided, but slowly he's realizing he's not. So the new day is unbearable. I get off the couch and I make pancakes. The only other food is off-brand cans of tomato soup my mom bought me. There's no reason I would ever make soup. drive through is why God made car windows to roll down. And while pancakes should drown enough syrup, lifting a forkful is like pulling a mastodon out of a very tar pit. I don't have any syrup. So I just eat them dry. Something in me is pleased my food is dry and tasteless. That same desire to suffer also wants to ignore the great time I had with Elaine last night. Think about how she's going to marry Dan. They've been together for a long time, but he is not the right choice for her. Some mistakes are mistakes, but some mistakes are fate. Mine, for example. To ignore this troublesome fact, I go to my steel pack suitcase transfer jeans, socks, and a t-shirt into my duffel bag. Then I change into a pair of jean shorts and a tank top. Over the tank top, I pull on a, uh, by the way, that's jean shorts, it's the 90s, he's not real cool. Over the tank top, I put on my button-down shirt. The second shirt is a drape to cover my fat. I complete my look with aviators and a cigarette on my way to my car. If only I was somebody else, I would be cool. 
And then just a little bit later, just before he gets to Duluth to visit his family, I pull over at the rest area at the crest of Thompson Hill. After enduring the reeking bathrooms, I go to the Overlook and take in Duluth and Superior with a harbor between them and the lake beyond. We think we are hardy up here because of Lake Superior, but living in the sister cities is like living in any other small city in the Midwest. The special thing is to be up here and look out over the waters and the cities and the surrounding trees. My mom expects me, but I linger, looking at the cities. The buildings and the factories with their smokestacks are oppressive, and the subdivisions keep pushing outward with the ground and the trees to put up the fight. Lake Superior stops the human intrusion, and if nature is worried, she doesn't show it. All those lives going on down there, each person believing their life is special. Some feel blessed by God, some are sure they are cursed. All those people concentrating on what they have and what they do, or whether they are blessed or cursed, it is all indistinguishable from up here. From here, a good life and a bad life look the same. And that's Mikey. He's not a happy camper, if you haven't guessed. Hey, you two want to come up? Is it your birthday today? It is my birthday today. Happy birthday. Thanks. Hey everybody, I am DG Clearing. Uh, so good to be here. It is my birthday today. So, yes, a beautiful Happy birthday. Day. Happy birthday. Happy home tonight. And uh, we can call it right. Youth is a barefoot girl. Youth is a barefoot girl in a sundress, running on a hardwood floor. It's a boy with glasses and a funny hat. Time is beautiful when you're young, causing you to fall in love with it. It excites your cells. Your face shows your infatuation. Youth exists only because time does, providing energy like a pantograph. Without it, there would be no innocence. There'd be no remembering innocence second cousin. We might be tempted to experience life all at once, and 22 years old would last a lifetime. You wouldn't be wise enough to appreciate the full flush of life's newness. We'd have too many highs, too shallows, lows to allow the satisfaction of frown lines. It would give us tempted days, making the sun the color of mud. This next one's called a lunch companion. A penny in the bag, be <laughs> a penny in the begging cup, offer to help when the project is done, advice given without listening, a text message late on Father's Day, all are symbols of your importance. A lone recliner is turned towards the TV, a green web lawn chair sits in the garage, a gray car sits under a tree at the park. The driver's newspaper sits on the dash. He lifts his cold coffee to his lips, lingers in the chirping of the birds just to hear the chatter. What is life but loneliness? The elderly woman with a scarf on her head sits in the last pew. She mumbles along with the prayers. She shuffles for communion. The priest places the wafer in her hand, gives a smile that does not reach to the last pew. God talks to her through the scriptures, perhaps, but she needs a companion for lunch. <laughs> Next one is swimming hole. They came to swim today off the dock in the pond. The pond was empty, but they didn't seem to notice. I had pumped the water away thinking they wanted a giant hole. The winterized boat sat tilted on its side in the sand. Putting my feelings in the top drawer of the dresser that sits in the hall, I stepped out of the warmth of the house. Closing my eyes, I walked up to my ankles in the silty mud to talk to fishing as they stood on the shore. Small group, maybe I'll read 
this one. Cheaper than life. A savage Steve Martin movie, the one where he has 12 kids and even a sequel, made me hate myself. At the end, at the end his daughter names her baby after him. A thanks for showing how to love. I tried. I thought, obviously, I failed. With 12 kids, movie dad had heartache and made mistakes and yelled, almost like in real life. But unlike a movie, you can't love, you can hurt, you can love, you can hurt and be hurt and not have forgiveness or a happy ending. This is my third act. I don't think there gets to be a resolution or it's even a sad ending, just more wanting, more empty house, more desperation, silent begging of accepting what I get. Because unlike a movie, you may not get to have, you may get to have your impassioned monologue, your speech from the heart all to yourself. All right, we have, uh, open mic next month, third Friday. Love to hear everybody back and more poems. Probably going to have to. What date? Uh, 17. 17. 17. I know things. <laughs> All right. Thank you, New Moon Cafe. Thank you guys for coming and sharing tonight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh,